Ghostbusters. I know we've got the spirit pack up there. I wanted something full sized. So a friend of mine gave me a. This is uh, fiber reinforced Ghostbusters proton pack shell. Straight out of the mold. It's been on the rough side. But we're going to see what we can do about fixing that. So I got all the parts, right? Um, the casting itself is superb. I mean, it is. There's nothing. Oh, there's very little wrong with it. Um, there's very little on the outside we're going to have to deal with. I've got all the pieces. Everything goes together. It's going to look really good. There are a couple issues that need to be addressed. Um, first and foremost, most fiberglass uh, shells, they're a little long. All right, you see this line here? It's a mold line. This has been added to the buck to um, make casting it easier. First thing we need to do is cut that right at that line. I'm just going to use a rotary tool with a cutoff wheel and just cut all the way around so it's nice and it's flat. That was the unmistakable smell of polyester resin. That stuff is horrible for you. I do not use polyester resin whenever possible. I didn't make this casting, so I'm not going to fault anybody for the, the product they feel like using, but I am not a fan of polyester resin. Um, I use epoxy resin. Well, urethane resin, actually. Um, and what I do use is Smoothcast 300. It's uh, it's pretty good. It's relatively bulletproof. It's equal parts A and B. You mix them together. You got about 10 minutes. Then it sets in 20. It's, it's fantastic. I don't care how good you are. Oh, um, there you go. You're going to have thin spots. And the best way to see those, this line right there, right there, these are all thin areas. That really, yeah, you can really see it right there. Need to be filled in. This part's pretty good. This is a little thin. So we're going to fill those in with um, the 300. So a 300 is also called 70D urethane fast set resin, by the way. Before we pour these, I'm going to hold it up to the light and put a circle around the area in Sharpie. So I know exactly where I want to go. So as you can see, there's a lot of spots that need to be um, coated again. We're going to start in the cyclotron. It's never, it's really hard to mix a small amount of resin. I've got other molds out. A, B. So I'm going to be making a couple of Homestead Tuscan kits in the near future. So I have the molds out. So I can mix more than I need for the proton pack and pour the rest in the molds. I'm probably not gonna come anywhere near enough to fill it with this, but we'll get as close as we can. Three, three fluid ounces. I, of course, got the bottoms marked A and B. The stick for each of them. And we'll try and keep the A and B away from each other. So I do not know if any of this is going to leak. So this is going to be an interesting experiment. That's why I'm doing it on top of the thing that will eventually become the motherboard. Nice light coats. That's probably enough. All right, now we're just going to 
do the slush cast dance. So there is no, um, there is no uh, chemical bond going on here. This is solely a mechanical bond. Luckily, this is fiber reinforced, which means uh, there's a lot for this resin to grab onto. And this isn't super thin, by the way. So I'm not terribly worried about it. It would probably be fine to work with. Just want a little added protection. Now we leave it, we give it like 20 minutes. We're gonna keep doing that like five or six times until everything is neatly covered. If I do have spots that I know have holes, I'm gonna use foil tape on the outside to fix those. As soon as this one's cured, we'll uh, we'll jump onto that and I will, uh, I'll show you what I mean by that. All right, I don't know how well you can see this, but right here, there are actual holes in the casting. And that is 100% where resin's gonna leak out when I dump a bunch of resin in it. Foil tape does an amazing job of covering things like that, because it's very conforming. And it sticks just amazing. So in theory, those holes should be completely filled. Let's find out. No white, which means nothing spilled out. You can see right there, came up and held it in place. Held in place. That one's probably an outside hole then. And fill that up with a glazing putty later. But it did a spectacular job of stopping leaks, which is exactly all we needed. Now this is a fiber reinforced casting, by the way. So this thin spot would have been absolutely fine. I just have a little, I, you know how it is. So um, next step is we're gonna wipe everything down, including the table, because it's currently filthy. No amount of schematics, no amount of blueprints, no amount of anything is going to get my motherboard more accurate than just setting it down on top and tracing it. Which is exactly what I did. There are lots of ways to cut this out. Rotary tools, hacksaw, a file. I mean, you can use just about anything. Um, if you take your time and you have the right blades, you can even use woodworking tools. I'm going to use a bandsaw, because I have a bandsaw, and that just makes sense for me. And that's the bandsaw in question. I need to get a handle for it. So, I'm just going to take my time, nice and slow, and uh, cut everything out. a motherboard that fits my proton pack pretty good. I'm not going to say perfect, but you know, this is just step one. Or step whatever step we're on. This thing looks really good. And these edges are super sharp and they will cut you in a hurry. Nice thing about aluminum, you can use woodworking tools on them. Just like that, every edge on this edge is just rounded. That's all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go over the whole, all corners, 
all the edges, a little bit of sandpaper, smooth everything out, and then we'll uh, we'll talk about mounting because that's where that's what's next. What I just did was wrong. Wasn't paying attention. Wasn't thinking. So the line here it's supposed to be filled in, and this is supposed to be just a hair, just a hair bigger. So hold on. Let me let me show you. So instead of, of holding the pen like this, I should have held it like this. So there's just a little bit of a gap. Then it occurred to me, I have a tracing from the motherboard that belongs to this casting. I'm just gonna trace that. It was a stupid mistake and it was because I wasn't thinking. Luckily, oh yeah, I thought ahead. And I got a couple extra pieces. So all I gotta do is trace that, cut it out like I just did. I'm not gonna show you because you already just saw what I just did. It's just gonna be the same thing. Before I get too into this, I wanna show you what I was doing. Let me bring you close. Um, I have it all cut out. I'm using my orbital. I've got 80 grit here. And then I'm going to, oh, I've got 80 here, sorry. This is also 80, okay. So I have 80 and then 220. There it is. This is my 120. So I go 80, 120, 220. And I'm just giving it a nice smooth polish just to make it all even. I mean, I could go to polish if I want, but I think that's overkill. this shadow line here that means this is higher than that and this is higher than this area in here so I want to sand the whole thing until that line goes away um, when I cut it it kind of smushes things over and makes this just a little proud I want to sand that smooth until it's all just a nice even color Here it is, fully sanded, good to go. So for those of you who are making these on your own, let me show you, since this one is the exact size of the Proton Pack, let me show you where the differences lie. And it's actually kind of noticeable. All right, now if we're going full on Canon, 100% exactly as it was in the movie, this is what you're gonna get. Gap here, let me, I still don't like this angle. Hold on. Let's see if we can fix this real quick. That's probably as good as it's going to get. I'm going to turn off this overhead. That might help a little bit. We're getting a weird glare right across the middle. That's a bit better. So now if you notice there's a... a trim all the way around. It's about it's about a quarter inch all the way around the whole thing. This line is straight and this has a weird little drip, dip down in it. Um, other than that it's pretty much the outline. So if you're making one of these and you have a pack that's a weird size or you want to scale it different than everything else. That's what you're looking at. There should be three holes to mount the Alice frame to. Two in the bottom, one in the center. That's pretty much it. Motherboards are actually quite easy to put together. Have everything loosely mocked up. Nothing's been glued on. It's just held in place with a. I'm using uh, quarter twenty bolts for everything, to be exact. But um, a couple of things here. I have to mount uh, the shell to the motherboard. So I'm looking around for these 
let me show you what I mean. All right, you see this dimple here? Probably not. Let me see if I can shine a little bit of a light on it. Okay, so there's a dimple there, right? Um, that's where the pack was originally um, connected to the motherboard. So now I've got to go over the entire pack trying to find these little dimples. Fortunately, I've only found a handful of them. In fact, not even that much. There's one here, right? Which are, they're kind of opposite each other. I would expect there to be one here, but there isn't. I mean, I could use the, uh, the bolt for, um, the bumper to hold it down too. I may do that. That might not be the worst idea. And then I think there may be, there's nothing up here. So that's two that I found. I'm gonna have to go through reference, see what I can find. Um, as far as the brackets go, I just have a inch and a half aluminum L bracket that I've cut. And this is gonna be clamped in place. That's gonna be set on top and then drilled. So I want everything to be nice and flush. As far as attaching it to the back of the pack, I'm not quite sure how I wanna do that yet. I may cut an access panel, I don't know. I mean, if I cut an access panel, it would make electronics much easier, too. But I'll worry about that in a minute. Drill a hole, drill a hole, put a bolt through, see where we're at. You know what I mean? I got a clamp holding it flat to the motherboard. This should be able to select. I moved it up higher so I could fit the board behind this. And this should be right about there. Just want to make sure it's flush. I'm just going to drill a hole. And I left a dimple exactly where I need to be. I've, I've uh, had drills rip through my hand too many times. Now, these two holes should match up perfectly. Uh, but they're too small for my bolts. But just found the rest of my step bits. Cut myself a couple of times too many on this project. Hence the band-aids everywhere. Perfect. And perfect. So I'm doing everything here in a quarter twenty. Um, just because if I, I drop a bolt or Something gets all mixed up. I don't want to have to think. And just, you know. I want most stuff to be interchangeable. So now this is flush. That. And it's a very good mounting point for the motherboard. I'm just going to do that a couple more times. But we'll pick this back up in a minute when that's done. This is terrifying. Not really. But I've got this clamp holding um, the pack to the alley, or to the uh, the motherboard. I'm just going to drill from the bottom up through uh, the motherboard and then through our little L, bar, L bracket. So if these are in the wrong spot, it's not the end of the world. Um, this is the Ghostbusters. It's not the 501st. The 501st... Um, little more bolts have to be in the exact places. Ghostbusters understand that all proton packs are different. So this is in the wrong spot. This is where that is in my proton pack. I am just completely guessing. Find out. And I got a nice little mark. It started vibrating weird. I didn't like that. So, judging from, from how this feels, it's about to pop through. There we go. Again, we're doing quarter 20. Mm. 
I could have undersized it and threaded it. Um, I don't like how thin this uh, material is. I don't, I don't. I don't like the thought of threading something that thin. I'd rather have a, a bolt. Um, I'd normally weld, but this is aluminum. Aluminum does not weld the steel very well. Then we do the same thing to this one. Just gonna drill up from the bottom, pop it off, ream it out, put a bolt in from the top, and then carefully thread it through. I'll show you that part in a minute. All right, this is gonna be real difficult to show. I got my bolt in, right? It's just enough room that I can lift this. I'm holding this in place. Carefully trying to feed it down. I'm not gonna be able to properly tighten it, but it'll give me enough that I can grab onto it and hand tighten it. It's secure. It's got a little bit of a wobble to it. Better. So it's pretty secure. I mean, it's just with two bolts. It's just fiberglass. I still want to put one on this side. I don't like that. And there's a dimple here. I may use that, but I'm not sure if that's to hold the wand or not. If I put one on this side, that would make this thing rock solid. I thought I was done. I was excited that I was done. Yeah, I'm looking at the spirit pack, trying to figure out what I want to do. I'm going to put one here. There's a spot right there. It's about the right height for the rest of them. One more. Right there on the inside. We'll pick this up as soon as that's on. In the end, there was three. Three points. I put one here. One here, and one down here. And this thing is rock solid. I am not worried about this falling off at all. Online, motherboards are pretty expensive. Um, they're very pricey, if you want full aluminum. Um, I've got, I got mine from, I believe it's the Metal Superstore. I'll put a, a link in the doobly, along with a couple affiliate links for any of the tools I'm using for this, um, in case you feel like following along. But I believe my, the, the plate I picked up was maybe 40 bucks, um, way less than what you would get if you were to just order a aluminum motherboard for a proton pack. And I'm not sure what you want to do next, whether it's going to be paint or electronics. And if you want to find out, there's only one way to do it. I do video games. You got a little Final Fantasy everywhere. I do Star Wars. Anime. That's the kind of thing you're into. Maybe think about sticking around. Either way. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. I appreciate that. Um, speaking of things I appreciate. My three members. I appreciate all three of them. And uh, yeah. I'll see you next time.